is that the opposing defense knows that you're going to be throwing. And so now their pass rushers can kind of pin their ears back. And there's really not much to slow them down. But if you can generate a running game now, then those guys have to play the run. They have to be concerned about play action. And now then when the quarterback drops back to pass, it's easier because those guys are a little bit slower uh, trying to get to him. Is there anything you can do differently to run the ball better than you guys have so far? Well, we've been working on trying to get double teams uh, to try to get movement, uh, some of that. And so sometimes it works, and but most of the time, a lot of times, let's put it this way, a lot of times the double teams are not true doubles because the linemen, as well as being part of the double, then he has to be ready to climb up to the linebacker. And so now then how quickly the linebacker feels makes a difference on whether it's a true double or not. Mark Berman. Romeo, along those lines, can you put your finger on two or three things maybe that that need to get fixed to get the running game to be where you want it to be? Well, I think that, as I mentioned, uh, we got to do a better job with our double teams when we have them, all right? And then we got to do uh, a better job of blocking the edge because if you can get to the edge, you know, then you can get big plays because if the running back can get outside on the edge, generally, you know, it's the first down or, or plus more yardage. So, you know, we got to do a better job on blocking the edge and then we got to do a better job with our double teams. You feel like it'll be kind of a, a refreshing atmosphere now that this trade deadline stuff is over with, speculation's over, and y'all can focus on football? Well, I think so, that we should. You know, that's what should happen, um, that guys are not worried about being traded or anything like that. And so now let's focus on football and try to win games. Aaron Wilson. For me, along those lines, uh, with Wolf Buller, player that was in demand, including from the Green Bay Packers. What do you do now when you don't trade a guy? Do you have a conversation with him and say, hey, we, this is why we wanted to keep you and uh, kind of reinforce, you know, the value of the, of the player and, and the person to your organization? Uh, I told him that before the trade thing even started. Um, uh, I told him that I wanted him on the team. I, I wanted all these guys on the team. I didn't want to trade anybody, Okay. I want them all on the team. Plus, when you're, when you're talking about trading, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not taking peanuts, right? All right? And nobody really came through with a deluxe nut package. Uh, and so if there had been some deluxe nuts laid out on the table, it could have been a different deal. And, Romeo, with the team you play this week, what, what are some of the things you see with them – having a younger quarterback, uh, do you go back and you watch the Oregon State? Do you, you have the preseason games you could have normally seen? Uh, what do you kind of do to do research on him? You have to go back and uh, look at his college work, you know, uh, talk to the scouts and see what they saw, uh, watch, watch his games that he's played, which we've done, uh, so that we can have an idea about what his abilities are and what we think that he's good at, you know, and, and he's got a strong arm. Uh, even though he's 6'6", he can run the ball, and, and they've run him on read options, and he's kept the ball on some of those. And, you know, so uh, he's a young quarterback that uh, the, the biggest thing is being able to go in and get game reps because he hasn't been getting game reps, you know, no preseason, uh, been sitting on the sideline inactive. So now he's got to get into the game, and the game is a little bit faster than maybe what he's used to. Brandon Scott. Hey, good morning, Romeo. Good morning. So how do you guys go about roster building and upgrading the roster after the trade deadline and not making another or not making a major move? What are your thoughts on how the team goes about um, upgrading the roster considering the situation you guys are in with draft capital draft capital, and uh, and obviously not making a move at the deadline? Well, you know what? It takes two to tango. I mean, and so when you talk about making a move, you know, you got to have somebody to work with you or, or who maybe is in a similar situation and maybe has a player that you think can, can benefit you. And I know that we have players that can benefit other people because we got a lot of action 
Uh, and I, but I really believe the action came because of our situation. Uh, There's a coaching change, you know, and people felt like that maybe they wanted to get rid of some guys to save money on the salary cap and all of those things, you know. But my concern is this team trying to win games, and I want the best players we have trying to win those games. And if those guys are not good enough, then we're not going to win, you know. But I think we have – enough talent on this team that if we play better and play more consistently that we can win some games. And then also Romeo, how would you describe the challenge of building relationships in a season like this? I know there are players on this team that were here last year that you might already have established relationships with, but as far as the new guys, whether that be rookies or free agents or trades or whatever that may be, what's been the challenge with COVID and, everything that's going on and trying to build those relationships with the players. Well, yeah, the biggest challenge is COVID itself uh, is, is because, you know, social distancing, uh, everything that's set up, we got multiple locker rooms. So the guys are not together. Uh, social distancing, they need to be apart. They got to wear masks. And so it's hard to, to develop that chemistry that you normally can develop, you know, when guys are hanging out together and they're maybe playing cards or they're telling jokes, you know, now all that's discouraged because you don't want them together. And then we meet on Zoom sometimes. And so normally you're in the meeting room with the guys and, and you can talk to them directly. Uh, whereas on Zoom, you can talk to them, but, you know, they got to unmute and then answer. And so it's, it's not a free flow. Uh, makes it a little bit more difficult, but everybody in the NFL has that same challenge and, and they're going through the same thing, you know, and uh, so how a team handles it, I think makes a difference. Cody. Good morning, Romeo. Good morning. Um, going into the second half of the season, what's the likelihood that we're going to see more of the rookies play versus more, more so than they did the first half? Well, I think a lot of that depends on how the rookies play. You know, when you put a rookie in, if he plays well, then you give him more reps. If he is inconsistent, then maybe you don't give him as many reps, you know, but that that's all up to the rookie. And that's not really up to me. That's up to the rookie because he's got to go out there and he's got to perform. But in his defense, he's still a rookie and he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And so when he goes out there and the speed of the game picks up and now you got blockers coming at you from different ways and you think you can make this play and you get off the block to make the play, but the runner is no longer where you thought he was going to be. And now there's a seam in the defense and we're giving up rushing yardage. You know, do you want to keep playing that guy until he can get some experience? We think that our rookies have good experience. We Not experience. We think they have talent. OK, and they've demonstrated some of that talent at times, but the consistency of playing the scheme is not quite there yet. Seth. Uh, Romeo, has the amount of chatter around the trade deadline changed a lot from where it was like 10 or 20 years ago? And also, uh, what is your favorite combination of deluxe nuts and uh, which of those nuts is your premium A number one nut? <laughs> No, because we were talking about deluxe nuts. Most of them come in a mixed variety, you know, and they're mixed in the can. So I like them all. The correct answer was pistachio. I like that too. Okay. <laughs> How about pecans? <laughs> okay, no, but what about the trade chatter? Like 10 years ago, were you talking much about trades at the trade deadline at all? No, no. I mean, you the time is a different time. So much information is out there now instantaneously. You know, back then, any trade was kind of kept under wraps. You know, the team didn't want anybody to know who they're talking to, uh, what team they're dealing with or anything like that. But now because of the information, it seems to get out. OK, and so it's out there. And so now then you have to address it. The players have to deal with it because it's on all the talk shows and all of that. And so boom, you have to kind of tell them, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, and that's what I told them. I mean, I told them when all of this stuff started before the trade, I told them I didn't want to trade anybody, but in the business of football, it could occur. All right. 
And so now, as it worked out, we didn't trade anybody, and we got the guys we got, and there's some ability on this team. And so now um, we got to put it to the best use. We'll go with John Shipley. Hey, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what what would you say is the biggest thing you have to stress to your defense about playing a young quarterback considering, you know, Minshew is a guy the defense has seen a decent amount this last year and a half? Well, I think when you talk about a young quarterback, sometimes they can get overconfident and think that the young quarterback doesn't know anything and he can't do anything. And so when you get overconfident, then you get burned. You know, you give up touchdowns and then you say, well, that guy was better than I thought he was. Well, I don't want that to happen. I want them to understand that this guy's a professional football player. Uh, he's got ability. If he didn't have ability, he wouldn't be there. And so we got to treat him just like he's the best guy in the world because he is the best in the world because he's going against us, you know, this week. We'll take about three more. Uh, John Reed. How are you doing, Coach? Um can, can you talk a little bit about, is it difficult? I mean, I know you, you said earlier about that you have to look at um, Luton college tape, but it, when, when you don't have availability of, 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 of game tape of a quarterback, how, how difficult is that going into a week of preparation? Well, you know what? You, you have to look at his college tape and you have to prepare for what you see there as it relates to the offensive scheme that you know that you're going to face. You know, because I don't think Jacksonville is going to ch change their whole offense, all right? But they will take into consideration what they consider his strong points to be and try to uh, accentuate those, you know? And so then in the course of the game, you have to see what he's doing and how they're trying to use him and then be ready to adjust in the game. John McClain. Romeo, you are 11-2 and two against rookies making their first start losing to Brissette, and then Locke killed you guys last year. He had tape on Locke, and he still killed you. What can you do to prevent another Drew Locke situation? Well, uh, hopefully that doesn't occur, but um, one of the things we can do is to try to get J.J. in good matchups so that we can put some pressure on the guy and get him on the ground, maybe cause a strip sack that we can pick up and run for a touchdown. Mark Berman. Romeo, um, I know you don't have a crystal ball or anything like that, but what do you think are some um, reasonable expectations for your team going forward the rest of the year? Well, I think everybody thinks we stink, and so I'm going to tell them that we stink, okay? And then if we can do better than that, if we can get some deodorant, then we'll smell a little bit better. And so a win is like deodorant to me. We'll go last one for Aaron Wilson. Romeo, when you look at the defense, what do you feel like uh, some of the guys can do better, including uh, Justin Reed? He said that, you know, he wants to get some more interceptions, try to tackle a little bit better. Uh, what do you see from Justin in particular? And, you know, he set some high goals going into the season. He's hoping to play better here in the second half. Well, I think that – Everybody wants to get interceptions and make plays and things like that, you know, but they don't come to everybody at the same time. So make the plays that you're supposed to make. Do your job first and then you can help out. Now, if that leads to more interceptions, great. If it leads to more tackles, great. I mean, maybe it doesn't lead to anything on a particular game because maybe they're not throwing your way, you know, and you got to accept that. And rather than trying to make a play and, and give up yardage, all right, do your job and then help out. Now, by saying that, I'm not saying that he's not doing his job because he's a good player and, and, and he does a good job. But that mentality, all right, you have to control that mentality. Thank you for the time, Romeo. All right.